Check it out. You can totally do this using these. So here's how we're going to get started. We've used these pan watercolors mostly, but we're going to switch to these really painterly tube watercolors. They're gonna allow us a whole lot more color mixing, which is really what we need for this to look semi-realistic. Speaking of mixing, I mixed up a really, really light wash that is kind of the undertone of this whole apple. No, it's not a Granny Smith apple, it's, it's a red apple, but the undertones have this really kind of green hue to it. So I'm gonna make sure that I leave some of those white spaces and I'm gonna make sure that on my test page I'm checking out what color red I want I'm gonna come in pretty strong I'm gonna come in pretty vibrant at first really focusing on those darker areas and those places on the apple that's true true red because everything is going to dry lighter make sure you get a good pick now I'm gonna take my water and I'm gonna feather out some of that I want to make sure I blend in because it's not just red and green there is a little bit of a blend there but if I'm not careful uh, the water will end up more like an eraser in some areas which is good if I'm making a mistake and trust me I make plenty of mistakes uh, during this tutorial but I don't want to lose that vibrancy so I'm letting all of my layers dry in between and I'm coming in and I'm really starting to build in those shadows. You have to make sure that your layers are dry or else they're going to blend or you don't want them to blend or you might end up with a wet area that kind of ends up like an eraser and smudges away some of that paint. This is where the color mixing really comes in handy because in those shadows, we actually want to mix in some of those cooler tones. I've got some blues, almost purplishes lurking um, there at the bottom of the apple. Up on the top, there's a little bit more brown kind of in that area where the stem is, but I really want to make sure that I am just mixing all of these colors. Hardly any of these colors am I just dipping in and going straight to the apple. That does not read into something that is realistic, that makes it look flat. Um, it doesn't give it very much life. We want something that has layers and we want something that has undertones of color. Speaking of color, you are going to have to go back and constantly pump up that vibrancy. That light color that I started at the beginning, I wanted it a little bit brighter because, of course, it dried lighter. So going back and adding more and constantly adding more to my apple here. More red, more layers, more colors. You can see there, that's the mistake that I was talking about. I didn't wait long enough for my paint to dry. So when, when I put my paintbrush on top of it, it actually worked as an eraser and it made that whitish blotch that I'm going to have to go back and fix later. Now the top of the apple was really, really dry and so I went in with a tiny detail brush, a little bit drier, and worked in some of the details on the stem there. Remember, this is watercolor. You want to use the water to your advantage. We're not using acrylic paint. You don't want it thick. You don't want it opaque. You can see I'm using the water up here to actually blend these areas together. It's not going to be perfect, and the quicker you accept that, the more happy you're going to be with your project. You want the water to actually be kind of fluid and flow. This is great to use in shadowy areas, just to lay down a wash of color and then and let the water kind of just flow with it a little bit that way it doesn't end up in in, in a hard edge it's the last thing you want in a shadow just when you think you're about done you want to make sure you go in and really pump up those darker values again always go darker than you think because it always dries lighter than you think and the only way to get those realistic dark values is to layer, to take your time and to have patience. Watercolor is fun, it's kind of fast, but you do have to have patience and let those layers dry. I'm getting my last of my shadow and my finishing touches in here and there you have it. And don't forget to wash this out.